from WBBZ TV Sports. It's time to beat the champ. Now, here are your hosts, Paul Peck and Sue Nowitzki. Well, hi everyone and welcome to Beat the Champ. We're here this month at Kearns Avenue Bowling Center. Looking forward to a great month of bowling. We have some familiar faces, some old faces, and we have a familiar old face here with Jim Russo, my new co-host for the week. Jim, are you looking forward to this today? I am, I am. They were looking for uh, a good-looking guy with a good voice. They couldn't find anybody, so here I am. Oh, we won't tell Paul about that. No. And I'm also here with Janelle. Jim, we missed you last month. I know. I'm so happy to be back. It was a long time, but I'm ready for some awesome bowling I today, got, guys. I got a lot of questions. Everybody was, where's Janelle? Where's Janelle? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm happy to see you back. Thanks, Sue. And we did have some high scores this week. And we're really looking forward to uh, this month's shows. So, Jim? We're going to let them roll, and good luck and good bowling. I'm here on Beat the Champ with our returning champion, Steve Biondi. One game last week, turned out to be our winner back here at Kearns. What's the challenges here at Kearns? Uh, getting used to a new house and playing a whole different area of the lane. Have you got a little practice today? Yeah, a little bit. Are they playing different than what you played, how it was at Rapids? Very much so. Are you feeling nervous, confident? How do you feel? I feel pretty good if I can execute and make my shots. Okay, well, I know what a great bowler you are. I know you're going to give it the best, and we're going to have a good show today, so good luck. Thank you. Hi, I'm here on Beat the Champ with our high qualifier here at Kearns Avenue Bowling Center, Carl Kenyon. Welcome to cold and flu season in western New York. <laughs> good job getting through this. 743 high qualifying score. How'd you find the lanes? Very tricky, but I bowled pretty good. I bowled the best I've bowled in a long time. It's been a little while since you've been here. When was the last time we saw you? Manor Lanes 2, maybe? I lost track. <laughs> and uh, we have Jim Russo here today from Manor Lanes 2. We're pretty familiar with him, right? Yes. Very nice guy. Very nice guy. Uh, no buttering him up because he's still going to talk. You know, you know Jim. <laughs> yeah. It'll be good. All right. Well, good bowling today. All right. Thank you. Steve Biondi, our incoming champion on the left, taking on Carl Kenyon. Carl is a well-respected Oh, yeah. Carl's veteran. well known. He's been around forever. And uh, it's going to be a pretty interesting match because we're going from rapid lanes where uh, Steve won the last match. And those are synthetic lanes. And we're going to wood lanes here at Kern. So mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting to see how Steve can adapt to that. I personally prefer wood. What about you? You like wood? Oh, wow. Gee, that's a loaded question. Uh, yeah. Actually, I was raised on wood. There you <laughs> so, go. So, no, as, as a young junior bowler, uh, most of the lanes were still wood lanes, and synthetic was relatively new. So, it actually threw my game off to where I had to adapt. Great shot, Brian. That doesn't seem to bother Steve too much on that first shot. No, these young guns, they have a lot of firepower, you know, they, they, they fire it through those heads, which tend to be the issue on wood. Right. They tend to have to keep their speed up. If you get a little bit slow, that ball is going to take off on you, so you want to keep your speed. Where, in this case, you know, Carl likes to play deep, and he does have a little bit more of a slower roll, so it's more of a challenge for him on these lanes, because he will have to manipulate the front of the lane. As you see, he was already starting right. in way inside between closer to fourth arrow. And he got a lot more finish than he wanted to. The, the analogy that I like to tell people is that when you're bowling on synthetic lanes, it's like bowling on a smooth surf, like ice almost. And when you're bowling on wood, you've got more friction. You're bowling on, or you're driving on gravel. So that ball takes a lot more. You know, interesting that you say that because short oil just came into effect when I was starting to bowl for college. And that really, uh, for us younger bowlers at the time, it really, like, that's how our game was built on short oil. And uh, what did short oil do to this game when it started? Well, it didn't have as big an effect until the bowling balls came out. Uh, I think uh, originally, when we were using harder equipment, it didn't have that big an effect. And then when the manufacturers started coming out with the softer stuff and the resin, uh, then the ball started taking off and then the short oil became a real problem. You know, especially for centers, uh, you know, a lot of things went into it too. Um, lane machines strip the lanes every time they oil now. And so you've got fresh back ends. 
So it, there's a whole lot of variables that went into it, but the short oil really went out the window when you started stripping the lanes every time you oiled. And, and uh, you didn't need, you don't need that big a back end when you have bowling balls that'll right. drive through right. anything. It's you know? the constant evolution between oil, uh, bowling ball companies, and bowling centers. You know, it just yep. seems like it's been just a, a, a constant evolution. So here we see Steve starts way back on the approach. So that's a good speed builder too. When you're standing so far back on the approach, that's where right. they build up. You build up a lot of ball speed. That's going to be the key to the match, I think. Carl being a little older, a little slower, and a uh, little under the weather. Uh, so he's got a little bit of a challenge here with uh, Steve, the young gun, coming out and firing that ball pretty good. Right. Well, and like you said, his challenge being coming from bowling great at Rapids, but, you know, Rapids is very high scoring. Uh, definitely a synthetic can, that's going to make a He's, good. he's going to be seeing something very different, but yet as I watch him bowl, he's actually playing these game, these lanes pretty similarly, which tells me that he's just manipulating equipment. Right. And that one he tugged a little bit and came in high. That, well, that's one thing he'll find out, is that on these lanes you cannot get it in. And characteristically on the house shots, on the synthetic lanes, you get that little bit of hold in the middle, that extra oil build up in the middle of the lane. Here, not so much. This is a pretty interesting spare. It's a 3910, and, and I find that uh, it probably one of the more difficult spares because you have to hit head on to get the 39, yet you need that ball to deflect, deflect a little bit to take out the 10. Exactly. So let's see how he does. Well, he got the deflection, but he didn't get, he didn't hit it head on enough to take out that nine pin. This feels like a good time to take a short break. We'll be right back with more action on Beat the Champ. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Let's get back to the action here on WBBZ TV. And if, you know, it's how you, it's perception is reality, but if you look for what's wrong with the lanes or what's wrong with the ball or what's wrong with the atmosphere, uh, you're going to have that negative got that a little right you're yeah. gonna you're gonna already be looking at it negatively and not looking for the solution this game you have to make quick decisions and you have to live with your decisions and all you do between shots is say this is what I got to do and go up and do it you don't let the negatives get into your right. game because they reflect on your score That's another thing that's interesting about this match. Steve is um, a very level-headed kid, and um, but right. he's a different generation. Than you know, you mentioned before that our height qualifier was 742, and of course they get the uh, TV from Dirt Cheap TV, uh, located on Niagara Falls Boulevard, right across from Trader Joe's, who was our winner. Dana Wojtovich won it this year. Or this month, rather, and it's important to remember that it's the high qualifier from the qualifying that wins right. the, uh, the big screen HD TV okay. from Dirt Sheet So TV. I stand corrected. It was a high <laughs> qualifier, and Dana was a high qualifier. Dana was a high qualifier, and that doesn't necessarily translate into the show. You know, we were talking about Dana, and uh, we had mentioned that uh, uh, about the mental game. And on a show last month, Dana admitted that he let, he missed a, a spare, he missed a four pin, and then he came back and just his whole game went to, went right in the garbage can. Right. Uh, and he admitted it in the post interview. He said, you know, that that's what happened to him. He lost his head and he lost the game as a result. Another reason to stay even keel while you're born. We've got a 13 pin match here now to Carl's advantage. This has definitely become about shot making. Even 
though they're playing their own game, because you can see how differently on the lanes uh, they're, they're approaching this condition, where a lot of times on a typical house shot, you'll see people play in the same area. They may manipulate bowling balls, but the area tends to be the same. The break points tend to be the same, where these two are approaching the lanes very, very differently. He's playing that like a uh, nice straight line, well, not gonna, looking for a whole lot, is he? I'm going to guess that he took a little bit of hands out of the ball, or he changed something because he was missing in on that lane, and I right. thought that that shot might have been a little in too, but it's going further down the lane and it's well, not picking up. For a couple of frames there, his speed became an issue. He got a little slower, and I think that's what caused the ball to go high. And now he's right back to throwing the way he did the first couple right. of frames. Great shot, Carl. So when you coach your Sweet Home Girls, do you um, impress upon them um, the importance of the ninth frame? Is that still something that? Yeah, we do. I, I, I tell them every frame is important. Right. Um, you know, with the younger kids, they tend to do what um, what we had last month with um, Dana. It, they tend to get down on themselves. They have two open frames and it's the end of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, and I try to tell them it's like a quarterback. You know, they throw an interception. They can't dwell on that. They have to come back in the next frame and put that frame, you know, in the past. Well, right now, Carl can go out and he can actually shut speed out with a double here. Well, he got a little bounce, which means he held on to the ball just a little bit longer and the ball finished and a it, lot harder. Right. It's got that early pickup, yeah, it goes through. The, right. In this lane, you cannot get away with it on. This is the lane that's, that reads a little early and... Uh, I'm pretty sure he'd like that shot back. Maybe just a little bit too much enthusiasm well, what he's given Steve there. is the opportunity to go up in, in the 10th frame and win, this, win right. this game. And that's where the ninth frame comes into it with the strike, because those strikes for them to um, make or break the match based on their first ball in the 10th. That's when, you know, when we're talking about a 13-pin game. Yeah, the shots become a lot more critical when those matches are, even the pin count, you know, a seven count versus a nine count could mean the difference in the game. Oh, absolutely. That's one of the things I find with the girls from my team. Uh, we have a tendency not to get the best count off of spares, and a lot of bowlers don't understand that. You know, you got nine spare, you want to get another nine count or a strike, you know, obviously. There you go. So he finishes with 204. He with 204, and what he's created a situation where Steve has to come up and double, because one, right. the first strike isn't going to be enough. So, so we've got a very interesting finish here in our first match, Every which is what I wanted, be because <laughs> I didn't want to sit here having to think of things to, uh, to talk about, because, you know, I very rarely no, you're always at a loss the words for words. to express myself. So let's see if Steve plays that tight line on lane 10. Oh, he got out. He got out, and the combination the of right. getting outside with the speed caused him to come in a little bit light. Right. Well, there's a lot of pin. there's a lot of dry boards out there, and the ball is just going to lose its energy in that area of the lane. And so Carl goes on to uh, match number two. Absolutely. So the the veteran uh, approach went out for us today. So we'll be back to uh, talk to Steve and recap this match when we return. Two oh four to one ninety, very close match, came down to the tenth frame. Right lane kinda got you a bit. Find those lanes different? Uh, a little bit. The right lane might have had a little bit more of a hang spot, but I also didn't really throw it too good in the tenth, so 
how much you can do a car bowl to good game. All right, was this one of the challenges of uh, changing bowling centers or? Yeah, I just didn't have a comfortable feel. I think I might have had the wrong ball in my hand, but yeah, you and, live and you learn. Yep, that's right. So Dan's got a little bit for you here to make it a little easier. Sweet. Thank you. Welcome to Kearns. Thank Congratulations you. On, uh, on your past wins, and uh, hopefully we'll see you here again. Thank you, hope so. I know we'll see you here again. So back to qualifying, and uh, maybe we'll see you next month at Transylanes. Hope so. I'll be there. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll be back for the next match here at Kearns Avenue Bowling Center. Hi, I'm here with Dave Sherman, one of our qualifiers today. I uh, heard this place has special memories for you. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Oh uh, yeah, I shot my first 300 game here when I was uh, 15. I feel like I got lucky. Yeah. So it was like five years ago maybe? No, nah, <laughs> a little bit longer than that. All right, well, did they play different? How did you feel about when you came in here to bowl? Uh, it's been comfortable. I like the wood. I like the dry surface on the outside. It helped me out. Okay, well, we'll see how that turns out for you today and good luck. Thanks. Dave Sherman on our left. Defending champion Carl Keenan on our right. So Carl has elected to let Dave start this match, which is up to him as the person who has won. And uh, that's a different approach, different way of thinking, it's another strategy. Um, so he's electing to, uh, to let Dave go first. And he bowled extremely well in that first match, although uh, people don't make the distinction between bowling well and scoring well. Correct. You could bowl really well and not score very well. And then you could score very well and not bowl very well at all. So true. So, uh, but Carl uh, didn't score that well, but he bowled really well in that first match. And now Dave opened up with the strike, so he's putting him to the test early. Right, right, right. And that's interesting because um, sometimes a 204 is a good score and sometimes it's not. You know, so in this case, right. um, you know, the it was lanes, a tremendous score. The lanes are a little bit more challenging, and I think that his experience and um, you know his familiarity with changing lane conditions actually ended up being to his advantage. I got that one out a little bit and came charging back, so now he's got that seven or three pin spare to deal with. Right. Well, I know that. Um, not an issue at all. Right. I know that he was experimenting with a little, few bowling balls in practice, looking for something else, because he really is forced very deep in on the lane. And that affects his carry, right. so. Worked out well for him um, in the first match, even though he overcame that pocket 7-10 spare. But other than that, he's been perfect on his spares. Um, another thing that I think might be a little undervalued in the game today. So he came in a little high again, left right. a four pin, and he you can tell he's really working on getting that ball out on the lane. Right. It's not a natural thing for him to throw the ball that way. So now you have a great bowler adapting to the lane conditions by changing the way he bowls. Right. One of the tricks that I find to uh, try and to amp up my ball speed, and as a female, it's a little tougher for me, is uh, looking further down the lane. Because you know, you're not supposed to do it right. Physically, you're not supposed to just whip the ball, so to speak. Or just, you know, you're supposed to generate it with your legs, and uh, not so much with your arm, because your arm's just supposed to pendulum swing. Right. So, uh, looking down the lane is 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 one of the tricks for sure. There's Dave. Oh, and that one bit early. Yeah. Well, Dave is. In a choosing to play these lanes to be in a little tricky spot because he's um, he's deep on the lane, yet he's playing very direct to the pocket. He's not opening it up at right. all. So one little pinch in is going to pay a price on the lane. One pinch in would leave you the four six, <laughs> would it exactly. not? Exactly. <laughs> and it did. It's kind of funny because Paul will always like if I say pinch in, he would um, be all over that because. <laughs> You know, to him, that's just like a bowling term, and we're talking about it because you know exactly what I'm talking about. Just getting the ball in just a little bit, a uh, little left of your target, even the slightest bit, just changes the direction enough to, to create a problem. Paul does a great job. I, I, uh, I talk to a lot of people, and 
sometimes they criticize his lack of bowling knowledge, but I think he's come a long way in the two plus seasons that we've been on. Right. And uh, no one can ever criticize him for not putting the time and the work into it. I mean, he knows more stats about this right. show than right. anybody on earth. Well, Paul's a, a big preparation guy, obviously from his years in the business, and he's a professional. And uh, he's not supposed to actually know the bowling. I'm oh. supposed to know the bowling. So. That's right. When, when I hear something similar to that, and I said, well, then I'm not doing my job because you're not <laughs> supposed to notice that he doesn't know uh, right. as much. His job is to uh, to keep the show rolling. Right. Yeah. And now that I'm being put in this chair, I mean, I can tell now you. Now you know how hard it is, I'm right? I'm no stranger to talking, but. Your, your job's <laughs> relatively easy. I'm Great not job. having any problem at all. <laughs> Carol seems like he's using every ounce of energy he has to get that ball as far out as right. he can. Well, we're talking about the fact that, you know, obviously he's under the weather and he's got this nasty flu that's been going around western New York. But um, and he's forced and we're to throw that the, ball 20 miles an hour besides. We just saw the uh, Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard that Janelle's manning over there early on in the match. 11-pin uh, lead for Carl. But you'll see that at taking on someone like Carl Kenyon, your opens will play a bigger part because he probably will make most of his spares. And Oops. he's going to have to right. if he Look. keeps throwing the ball like that. Well, yeah. It is breaking hard yeah. in the back end for him, that ball. And uh, just, you almost can watch it come behind the head pin. Do you, it's cutting do you so. think it's going to get to a point where he's not going to be able to generate enough speed to keep that ball down on that lane? Well, he's got a few more boards to work with, and in, the advantage is that he's on the lane that does not have the ball return next to it. Because if right. he was on lane 10, he'd have no place to go. But on lane 9, he actually can. You know, I've seen move over to lane 8. Absolutely, I've seen it <laughs> a million times. In fact, I think the PBA is built on it now. That's how I try to pick up my 10 pins, by creating as much angle as I can. Right, right, right. <coughs> Do you use a spare ball for your 10 pins? I don't. I don't, because I'm just very hard-headed. <laughs> I, um, I get with one ball, and I have, oh, no fingers in that one. Well, either. let's talk about Tricky, because that yeah. ball was just a little bit right of his target. Right. And but I don't think it he never, got into it, it as much either. never thought about turning around. You know, I think that's one of those variables that are are hard to say when you're not throwing it. I didn't throw any balls on this condition, but I did try to qualify here last year. What a great spare. Well, as we talk about spare shooting, that's absolutely what he needed to do. Right. Um, I find that it, depending on your ball and how much energy it retains, if you just can, if you just get it right into those, uh, into that track, where most bowlers will be playing in the track, here on these conditions, the track ends up being just very burnt and very dry. Great job. Came back strong. So Dave shot 300 here uh, when he was 15 years old. Right. And I don't know how out. long ago that was, but uh, Whitey Heidenberg is in the audience here with us, and uh, Whitey's dad actually built this center in 1957. So, wow. uh, yeah. And I'm assuming these are the same lane beds from that. Whoa. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Carl not only threw a good ball, but he did a little dance for us, which... <laughs> You know, we're talking about Carl being under the weather, but I sometimes when you're not feeling 100%, it actually slows you down and and keeps your pace a little bit slower. Um, have you ever noticed that? Oh, yeah, for sure. And there's a ball driving oh, through wow. and there's leaving so much our just dreaded happened. nine pin. There's so much that just happened there. I mean, he definitely moved left like we talked about into the, almost into lane eight. He used the approach from lane eight. 
And um, I think he didn't really know where that ball was going to go, and it turned out to be perfect until it hit the pins and kept on driving and, and left that nine pin. And again, you got a little loft. You heard a little bump out on the lane, which means he got a lot of hand into the ball, and that ball really drove through. No deflection. Great spare. We're going to be back with more Beat the Champ bowling action in just a minute. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. So don't worry about this snow. Start thinking about your summer. Great shot. And isn't it kind of typical that someone, a veteran bowler, sees an opening and very, very good at capitalizing on it. There's your, Cas your Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard with Janelle. See the score right there. It's Carl's got a little bit of an advantage going here. If he can strike here, he's going to really make things tough on Dave. After Dave's open in the seventh, let's see if he can do it. And what's tough is that open was a pocket hit. You know, we saw Carl leave an 8 10 in the first match. That's a 4 9. You know, those pocket t hits can uh, be pretty painful. Right. And you, you can, uh, the bowlers at home or the or the average bowler, they leave the 4-9 and they think, oh, I left a split. But that's actually a very good ball. It is. I mean, they, think they were so close to throwing a nice strike, it's just a little bit high, and they shouldn't be discouraged by that. You know, maybe just a little more, uh, a little move left. Right. You know, and they're right where they want to be. Right, and that's where... Oh. Oh, and another 10 pin on lane 10. Wow. And that 10 pin may prove to be his demise in this match. Carl starting to open up on him. And remember when they come bowl the qualifiers at Transit Lanes that the high qualifier during the qualifying scores will win one of the uh, big screen HD TVs from our friends at Dirt Cheap TV. Dirt Cheap TV, yeah, right on Niagara. I pass it every day, and every day I want to walk in there and buy one of those 75 <laughs> inch high def 4K smart TV. They do everything but wake you up in the morning. Well, let's do it, Jim. Let's yeah. put it. Uh, let's put it in the put, lounge. Put it right behind the bar. Perfect. Yeah, that's what we need. It's, well, people stop looking at me and look up at the TV. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and a six pin. A little better than the 10 pin, but uh, I'm thinking Dave isn't all yeah. that thrilled about it. No, well, now he's got to force it just a little bit because every ball has to strike. Because Carl's posted a pretty big lead here over a 37 pin lead. Yeah. Good spare there. So Kyle just needs a couple pins here to seal this match. And uh, he'll be moving on to face Pete Maduri, who is definitely uh, one of the up and comers in this area. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't say up and comers. He's pretty established. He's been around a long, long to time. To me, he was, just, he was just a young man when I first. Uh, when I first met him. Ooh. 10 on 10. That sounds familiar. Dave left a couple of them, and now Carl has to deal with them. And he doesn't have the luxury of moving as far left as he'd like, right, I'm right, pretty right. sure. This is where the ball return becomes an, ob uh, an obstacle, but a spare here will be enough to move him on to the next match. And, and no has. doubt about it. I don't know if the viewers uh, are taking note that these guys don't miss unless they're leaving a split. You know, we haven't seen, very rarely do we see this caliber of bowlers miss a one pin spare. Right, well, and if you want to know what the difference between a 160 average bowler and a 190 average, it's about three spares, right? <laughs> well, we're going to see the same thing with Pete. I'm sure he's going to uh, be a great spare shooter as well. So we'll get back to talk to Dave after this match and uh, move on to the next match with Carl. Very nice. Good match by Carl.
218 to 159. Tough match for you out there today. Um, how did you see the lanes? Uh, they played similar to what they did during qualifying. I just missed in a couple times and then left some 10 pins by three good balls. Yeah, couldn't miss, miss in on this today. Carl distracting you with this coughing? A little bit. Yeah. Okay, well, give you a little bit of money for your showing up today. Your, your return visit to Kearns. Thanks. Thank you so much for bowling. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Well, good luck. We'll hope to see you next month at uh, Transit Lanes. All right. All right. Bye. We'll be back for the next match here to finish up our, our day at uh, Kearns Avenue Bowling Center. We will be right back. I'm here on Beat the Champ with Pete Maduri, one of our finest Western New York bowlers. Haven't seen in a while. What have you been winning lately? Uh, no wins. Been having a little uh, rough stretch here, missing some cuts, but uh, it was nice to bowl good here and hoping to do well today on the show. Well, it's always colorful. It's always fun to have you here, and I saw that you won the 2017 Bud Light Challenge, so that wasn't that long ago. No, that was, yeah, March. That was a nice win for 5,500, so hopefully we can rack up a little more change today. Okay, well, we'll hope to see a lot of you today. Good luck. All right, thank you. Thank you. Pete Maduri on the left, taking on our champion, Carl Kenyon on the right. Carl, again, opting to let his opponent go first. Worked for him last time. Worked for him both times, actually. Yeah, so far it's been a successful formula. Well, if it ain't broken, don't fix it, I guess. There you go. Pete Maduri, a big, strong guy, can probably put the ball through the back of the machines here. <laughs> So uh, hopefully he'll be able to control these uh, lane conditions that are a little bit on the dry side so far. Got that one in. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, that's what you want to find out. There you go. He's got good ball speed and he's got a, a unique roll. If you see his ball going down the lane, it's not a spin, but it's not getting into a roll too it's early. Not, it's not driving as much as some of the other ones have been. I mean, if you look at it, it looks like it's almost creating like what you expect to see on synthetics with that with right. that slide. Right. So he's got a lot of skid, and that'll help him today. Carl's not going to go quietly. No, Carl's got a lot of tricks. See where we he's... may have ourselves a uh, heck of a match here, as both of these guys know how to play this lane, it looks like. Carl is actually crossing the arrows at 25, right. which would be third arrow for and, a left-hander. And again, as an old guy, I think it's kind of taking its toll on him because he's really got to work at it. I'm sure he's glad, uh, I'm guessing he's glad it's the last match of the day for him because he needs a little rest. He'll be taking a nap for sure. <laughs> You hear that little bounce in the front of the lane. It almost gets a little, it, it almost it makes it hook harder in the back end. You know, I use that as an example for uh, people that I coach as to the importance of lifting through the shot. Mm -hmm. Because if you notice when you when you hang on to it just a little bit longer and give it a little more lift, that's what happens. That ball bites just a little bit more. You get a lot more finish. So I guess the moral of the story is if you're not getting your ball to finish, what should you do? <laughs> Lift through the shot a little more. Well, we'll see now if Pete can take advantage of this open frame. Now Pete's playing these lanes a lot differently. Like and we've seen every bowler play these lanes right. differently than Carl. He's the only person in his spot. We've seen we've seen that all day on, on lane ten, where if you get a little bit to the right, it ends up hanging. Right. So the safest spot to play is definitely closer to the third arrow. Yeah, and that seems to be the optimum point for the uh, carry also. Your carry seems to be a little bit better going inside. You know, a, a couple of times, uh, Dave got outside a little bit, got back to the pocket all right, but then left a couple right, of 10 very pins. weak. Uh, 
Well, there goes a theory about not seeing too many missed spares, well, my buddy Pete. Yep, Pete is, you know, he's, he's, he's younger and uh, from the school of thought, well, just, just from the school of striking a lot, you know, right. so uh, although he's bought a lot of tournaments and I'd say that, you know, he's put his time in, um, he still comes from that place where they make it up with strikes. And, you know, Carl's from that place where you never throw away a pin. Right. And there he's back on the strikes. <laughs> but, you know, it's funny. On the other hand, the younger bowlers today probably do take missing a spare much more in, in stride because they believe right. they're going to throw three in a row where the older school bowlers don't throw away pins because they're not necessarily, you know, they've seen enough of the game to know what's going to happen. That's the truth. As a coach, uh, you really, you really have to emphasize the importance of those spares, you know, and, and the count after you get a spare, right. you know, because sometimes the bowler goes up there and they don't get a strike and they don't give a second thought to the spare. They just get up there and throw the ball and then they miss the spare. And, right. and one of the hardest things that I find is keeping your head on making that 10 pin or that seven pin. And, it's gonna, and when you think you threw a great shot and you're, you're kind of aggravated that you left exactly. that and you've moved on to the next shot already and you're busy thinking about that, the fact that you should, that was a good shot. And thinking blah, blah, more blah. about why you didn't get the strike than Making why you spare. should make that spare. Right. But you said that about count. Two six counts negates your spare. Exactly. So very important to to line up and, and keep your head in it. Every frame is a game within itself. I gotta mark that down. That sounded really <laughs> prophetic. Every, yeah. Well, that's the dangerous thing about where Carol's playing is missing a little bit right of his target and the ball's never gonna return because he's just so deep on the lane. And Whatever head oil there is, he's going through it. And it's very important that he keeps it online. Might have it. Oh, it was a pretty nice try for that. The action will continue on Beat the Champ in just a minute. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. He's been able to come back and capitalize on those, uh, even if, when his opponent throws a spare. He's been able to come back and get into it with a couple of strikes. So let's see if well, he can do yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. The difference here is so deep on the lane that and hit becomes one. an issue. But that was great. That was just perfect. Very nice shot. So this lane's been a challenge for him because as deep as he is on the lane, he's still got that ball hooking high. And if he, and if he throws, if he moves his eyes to the right at all, he loses, he loses hit. So he's going to need a little extra oomph on this, yeah, this to one get he this ball wanna... through the lane. Just pay attention to where he gets the ball at the breaking point that you were talking about earlier. See if he can get it out there. He actually got it beyond the breaking point. He got he was outside of, I believe, 10, 38 feet down the lane. It's so, it, it's so hard from the angle that NX, I'm sitting behind yeah. lane 10 that I can't get a good view of what's going on there on lane 9. Yeah, it appeared to me like he got that ball outside of 10 at the 38 foot mark, and it came charging back and went left for well, him. You're which in it. was good and bad. I mean, you don't want to go left, but no. you got a strike, so. I'm guessing he's going to take it. Is it impossible to switch balls here at this at this stage of the game? I mean, he just he's got one more frame left on that on that lane. Oh. Good shot. He really would have liked that one. And again, we want to mention our friends there at uh, Dirt Cheap TV. 
every month giving uh, giving away a big screen HD TV. They not only do TVs, you know, they have a lot of other things in there too. They have DVRs and uh, all kinds of electronics that'll make a guy like me very happy. You know, <laughs> and all kinds. Really? Of, yeah, they got all kinds of little toys. They're located right on Niagara Falls Boulevard across from Trader Joe's. And uh, like I said before, I go in there just about, I, I don't go in there, but I go by there and I always think, I gotta get in there and get myself one of those really big ones. Yep, so if anybody's looking for a television, that would be uh, definitely a place to check out. Oh yeah. And a lot of our bowlers have gone home with TVs and some multiples. I think Chuck Jagosinski has a house full of them, actually. Yeah, he's got one in his bathroom, <laughs> his basement, his attic. Let's see if Pete can uh, get a strike here. He would surely need it. Oh, that was a messenger, but it just missed. Another great shot. So we got a really close match here. So it Carl, is now. <laughs> absolutely. Didn't look like it before, but it is now. And, and not not for lack of great shots on Pete's part, because he's just having trouble getting those corner pins out now. Every spare is important here. Right. And he's been dead on the spares, especially those ten pins. He's picked up three of them so far in this game, and that's the big difference in the game. So Pete's pacing 190. He can, he can strike out for 203, so we're, we're looking at Carl here. Um, Carl's got a potential of 211, but he's going to have to throw, you know, Couple more the next strikes. three. Yeah. I, I'm marveling at the way you do that scorekeeping in your head. <laughs> a little mini Actually. calculator. Dreaded 10 on 10. We've seen our share of those today, haven't we? We have. That was a big shot for Carl, though. He knew he needed that one um, to force Pete to throw a couple strikes in the 10. So he's going to need all three strikes here to force Pete to spare. And, go to 190. And I'll tell you, as much as I've been looking at score sheets in my life, there are people out there like Jack who can glance up at it and tell have it meal. all figured yeah. out. And it just, it's just mind boggling. Yeah, I've been in the uh, industry for 47 years. I started when I was three, in case you're wondering, <laughs> in case you're doing math. But, uh, oh my. Got a little slow on that one. Well, he put up a valiant effort this month, being yeah, he did. sick and really not having the greatest uh, ball reaction there is. And Pete's going to move on and be our champion for next month. But all the credit in the world to Carl for a great show today. So we're going to wrap up this match here and uh, come yeah. back and talk to Carl about his two game run. And if we can get him to stand up right uh, by now, he might be asleep already. And then we'll wrap up the show and uh, and we'll good, see you next week. Yep, see you next week at Kearns Golf Center. Good first week though for us. Yeah, not bad. Very nice. steam a little bit today. Um, I know what you're thinking, but I'm going to let you say it. What am I thinking? I bowled bad. I bowled a bad game. He's a good bowler. He bowled a good game. He kept it in play. He made some bad shots and the better bowler won. Well, the lane condition forced you in a little bit. I just bowled a bad game. Okay. Well, we're going to give you a little uh, excuse there on the sick. You did a nah, valiant job. Nah, nah. You did no a valiant excuse. job. Not you did a valiant me. job no, today. No. Well, great Thank bowling. You. Put on a great it. show for us. Dan's got some money for it. We, we at Kearns think you did all right. 
<laughs> thank you very much for having right. us. Really hey. appreciate being here. And thank, thank you for you. coming. Thank indeed, you. indeed. All right, so Jim. We have Pete. our champion, Pete Manduri, who uh, managed to get by the old veteran in uh, Carl Kenyon. Carl was a little bit under the weather, but you made him even sicker. He sounds like a dying goose out there when he coughs, but uh, <laughs> no, he's a great bowler, and uh, you know, it's an honor bowling him. I love bowling him. Always been a fan of him, so it's nice to beat him with a 180. So now next week, we're going to come back. We're going to have a fresh condition. You're going to have three new opponents. Uh, you think you're going to have a big transition? 180 is not going to do it. I know that for sure. So we're going to have to get things together, and hopefully we can do that. All right. Well, you practice, and we'll see you here next week on Beat the Champ. Okay. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll be back to wrap up our, uh, our first week here at Kearns Avenue Bowling Center, which was very exciting. We hope to see more of that. We'll be back with you in a bit. And, um, but we're going to find some um, different competition next week. We have Jeremy Zimmerman, who's got the record for the most wins. And we've got Andy Reddick, who is a left-hander, um, coming up next week. So and what do John you think? Daniel and John Danielitz. And John Danielitz, who is another winner here. Yep. Um, and Andy is going to be our first lefty, so it'll be a test for him. We haven't had anybody on the left side of the lane, so we'll see how he fares on that condition. Right, and the scores have not been that high, Janelle, so it's been an emphasis more on shot making and adjustments, and we're going to see a left-hander come on now, so, you know, I'm sure you yeah. see that. This there. is what bowling's all about. It's about making those adjustments, and, and it's not about just always throwing strikes. It's what you have to do in order to get those strikes. Right, and it keeps the matches closer and a little bit more interesting. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens next week here on Beat the Champ. See you next week.